In Australia and around the world, concrete road pavements are being built to carry heavier trucks and increasing traffic. Whether the pavement is plain concrete or continuously reinforced concrete, and whether it's constructed by a slip form paver or by hand, building a high quality concrete road requires good materials and mix design and skill in making the concrete, delivering and placing it at the paving front, compacting the concrete, finishing, curing and texturing the surface and in constructing the joints. In this video we'll look at the skills you need to make good concrete and to deliver and place it on the road pavement. We'll look at the other paving processes in another video. It doesn't matter whether it is the lean concrete sub-base underneath or the base concrete layer on top. The job of making, delivering and placing the concrete needs to be done with skill and care. There are five main steps. We need the right materials weighed out to the right proportions with all the materials fully mixed then delivered at the right slump and finally placed uniformly with no segregation. You know, with today's computerised batch plants, you could be excused for assuming that every load of concrete delivered to your site will contain the specified ingredients and will be fully mixed. However, this doesn't always happen. On this New South Wales project, over 10,000 cubic metres of concrete had to be removed and replaced before opening to traffic, all due to poor batching and mixing. So let's look at each of the five steps in detail. First, we need quality materials. For the aggregates, this means that the source, size, grading, cleanliness, etc. must be systematically checked. That the stockpiles of the different sizes don't intermingle. And that the loader doesn't dig into other materials under the stockpiles. It means that the cement and the fly ash must be delivered to the specified quality, along with the admixtures and the water. Now, having got the right quality materials, we need to measure them out in the correct proportions for every batch of concrete. That means that the weigh scales must be calibrated regularly, that the moisture in the aggregates needs to be allowed for, that the actual weights batched need to be recorded and then compared with the approved mix design. Then we need to fully mix these materials into a uniform blend. Whether it's a central mixing plant using tippers, or a mobile mixing operation using truck mixers, the mixer must be periodically checked for its efficiency. And then, procedures established to ensure that every batch of concrete is fully mixed. For truck mixers, the mixing details are recorded on the ID plate on the truck. Similarly, central mixing plants must also be checked for their mixing efficiency. Then, during routine production, sound procedures must be followed to ensure that every load receives the full mixing period. For a typical truck mixer, this means three to four minutes of mixing, and the clock doesn't start until all the ingredients are in the bowl, so the charging time does not count. Likewise, for central mixers, the mixing time starts after all the ingredients have been added. After the completion of mixing, the slump and the air content are the key properties that are checked to ensure good pavability and quality. The specified slump is typically 40 millimetres for slip form paving and 60 millimetres for handwork. The entrained air content is typically 4.5%. 
For the high strength concrete base, test cylinders are also made to check the compressive strength of the concrete. Where a central mixer is repeatedly producing the same mix, the batcher can monitor slump and confirm full mixing by checking the power drawn by the mixer. When truck mixers are used, the slump is adjusted by addition of water at the slump stand immediately after charging. At this plant, a time stamp records mixing times on the delivery docket to ensure that every batch has been fully mixed after slump adjustment. RTA New South Wales paving specifications have very specific contractual requirements to provide assurance that every truck mixer load is fully mixed at the time of discharge. Now, having gone to a lot of trouble to batch the right weights of high quality materials and having mixed them to a uniform workability, we need to deliver and place the concrete so that it stays fully mixed. In other words, so that it doesn't segregate. With truck mixers, turning the drum at agitation speed maintains uniformity and prevents segregation. With tipper trucks, controlled agitation is not an option, so it's very important that haul roads be well maintained to minimise segregation. You can tell a lot about the uniformity and slump of a tipper load by watching how it falls away during discharge. The same for mobile truck mixers. If a load looks strange, halt the discharge and check its slump. For tipper trucks, make sure that all the load falls away, particularly up in the top corners of the tray. If concrete sticks up there, it'll fall later as a hardened lump. Keep tippers clean and don't let any rubbish get into the concrete. When you're tipping concrete, work out beforehand how far each load should be spread. There's no point in the paver auger having to overwork to shift concrete through long distances. There's always the danger of segregation when you have to move concrete about. Good load spotting is very important. It will give better compaction and a smoother finished ride. In hot dry weather, you might need to wet up the subgrade or sub base before paving to minimise suction of water from the concrete. Excessive losses could cause plastic cracking after paving. Don't feather out the load too far, such that later trucks have to run over the last lot. Hardened and flattened concrete will never get properly fluidised and compacted. On wide reinforced pavements, you'll need a pre-spreader. Check each load as it tips, and then make sure that the spreader is moved forward at a pace that gives an even distribution of concrete to the paver behind. You'll get a better compaction ride and productivity that way. On hand paving jobs, the man on the chute or the pump line will make the job much easier and better by spreading the concrete uniformly between the forms for the shovelers and the vibrator operators. Now, we need to talk about how time affects the paving process. Concrete, of course, stiffens and hardens as the cement reacts with water in the mix. The reaction is retarded at first, but then the stiffening begins, so each batch must be placed and compacted quickly. And the time available to place and compact gets shorter in hot weather, because the cement water reaction speeds up. That's why the delivery docket must have an accurate, verifiable batching time stamped on it. This way, the age of every batch is known. All slump tests must be completed within 40 minutes of this time of completion of batching. And for truck mixes, if any re-tempering on site is needed, the water addition, full remixing and the slump test must all be completed before the 40 minutes is up. There is also another time limit called the forming time. This defines the maximum age of a batch that can be paved. The forming time is also calculated from the time of completion of batching. 
To do this, the chainage where each batch is placed and the time that the paver passes that chainage needs to be recorded so that the forming time can be determined. So, in summary, making good uniform concrete and delivering and spreading it with minimum delay are vital to building a high quality concrete pavement. You need the right materials, batched to the right proportions, fully mixed to a uniform slump and then delivered and placed without segregation and within specified time limits. Remember, none of this can be taken for granted. Too often, it just doesn't happen on construction projects. So your part in building quality concrete roads is very important. Act as if what you do makes a difference, because it does.